Joining us in studio right now, he is the head of Arizona's DPS. Colonel Frank Milstead is with us as part of a regularly scheduled once a month. Colonel Frank comes in here. We talk about a variety of things. This might be the first time you are the story, though, Colonel Frank. It's an exciting day for me to uh, be here to talk about my speeding. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about it because we have to, sir. Oh, I... um, yeah, you know, we have to. It, it's part of the gig. And body camera footage was released this week by Yavapai County. And here's a little bit of the audio from it. Hi, uh, how's it going? Great. How Good. Are you? Deputy with the Sheriff's Office. Really nice to talk to you. This guy's going about over 90 miles an hour, weaving through traffic, not using you guys' turn signals. Okay, that's how it saw a start. Um, how how fast were you going, sir? And, and what's the posted limit in that area? So I some apparently I was something like 15 over, and it was 75, uh, and we were moving through some slower traffic, and uh, there were. And I, I sped up to get around slower traffic and went back down to the speed limit. But it doesn't matter. I broke the law. Uh, he stopped me. And uh, he was very professional, a great deputy. Um, it just it, it was just one of those days that it was my turn to get stopped. Is going over 85 considered criminal speeding? No. It's not? No, it's 21 over the posted speed limit is criminal. Okay, so so not, it's just a misdemeanor. It's uh, it's not even a misdemeanor crime. It's just a civil traffic infraction. There's no criminal activity at all. But it's a civil action. Okay, um, you mentioned, and I know you you had a statement out about uh, the fact that you got a warning because I think that's what stuck with most people yeah. is you got a warning and people believe you got preferential treatment. Sure, but um, it is not unusual to get warnings, right? Uh, what's the per there's a percentage, right? Yeah. So right now at, at, at DPS, and we talk about this a lot, and we've talked about it on the air. We don't care whether a trooper issues a citation or issues a warning. Everyone gets a piece of paper so we know who got stopped and why they got stopped. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's DPS's policy. And right now we issue 43% of our stops are written warnings. Okay. Uh, Yavapai County is a little different. Uh, uh, their numbers are quite significant on the warning. The last In the last two years, they've issued 17,559 warnings and 2,700, 2,700 speed tickets. Okay. So it's, uh, you know, 70% so are warnings. Morning, so that's what happens. I, I, and I don't disagree. And those are numbers and they're real. Do you, is it normal slash reasonable um, for a anyone else out there who is doing 90 on the 17 to expect a warning? I, it's the officer's discretion. We don't tell them when they have to write everybody. That's what they get to do. And I will be candid with you. I thought that I was getting a ticket. I was actually surprised when he showed up back at the car without a ticket. And I've been doing this a long time. I work traffic at Phoenix PD. Uh, I was a traffic bureau commander, for goodness sakes. And uh, I've issued a lot of warnings. And most of those have to do with how people comport themselves. Uh, if they are people down on their luck, people who are, you know, polite, Compliant, um, you compliant, know, compliant yeah. and, you know, sorry, because okay. all we're really trying to do is change driving behavior. Uh, and it was a wake up call for myself and Angela in the car. Uh, it, it, it we and, and again, we didn't it wasn't like we were just driving at 90 miles an hour, you know, for the first hundred miles of the trip. We were just driving, you know, three or five over the posted speed limit, kind of going along with traffic, came up on some slower traffic. I worked my way through and it was and, and really I need to be more patient. Uh, and that's what it is. But. Again, I can't um, change any of that. But when he went back to run me, because everyone goes, well, he must have known who you were. You gave him your credentials. And the reason I end up giving the credentials is that we always identify ourselves as law enforcement. Always? That's always. what you're told to do? Absolutely. From okay. the time you're in the academy, you always make sure that so officer So that's not unusual. Because I think that that's important for people to understand. Because I'm a layman, right? You know, I don't have a badge. I've never had to put on a gun. I don't know what that world is like other than what I read and what I talk about. So to me, when I see that, sir, I'm like... That seemed a little odd. No. Nope. So explain that to people who thought that was odd as well. So from the time you start the academy, you were told if you were ever stopped by a law enforcement officer, identify yourself as a law enforcement, let them know who you are. Why? Uh, well, because you could be armed. Uh, it puts people at ease. They also know that they're, you're not a threat to them if they do see a gun or see something else in the car. So we identify each other and we know who we are. Um, and I would tell you that uh, it's not unusual. But here's the thing. So if you want to jump to the conclusion, he absolutely knew who 
I was. And I even think Angela says he's the colonel. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So and I and I couldn't hear that from where I was at the time. I didn't know it because he's saw... on the passenger side of the vehicle and you're driving. Right. Cor- right. And the cars are going by. And, and I, I didn't I didn't know that till I watched the video. But he's but uh, he, and that being said, he goes back to the car. And once he went back to the car I, uh, and he starts to run me, I mean, he's checking me for warrants and to see if I'm suspended. So I assume he doesn't realize, you know, what I am or who I am. And I'm not even sure he gets the whole law enforcement thing. And I just assume he's coming back with a ticket. Okay. He does because he says, nice to meet you. And you said, yeah, I wish it was under different circumstance. Yes. I, I want to back up, though, a second. We're talking to Colonel Frank Milstead, director of DPS, who you've probably seen the body camera footage or have read the news here locally, that was pulled over on the I-17 in October for going 90 and got a warning. Uh, Frank, you had said that you were surprised that the deputy didn't write you a ticket, right? You were fully anticipating that when he came back up to the passenger side window, you would have been given a citation. Correct. But you weren't. Right. Should you have asked for one? In in retrospect, so if, I heard you, you guys talking. Said, yeah. I heard yeah, I heard you guys talking about this I when I was driving works. in. Yeah. Well, and I and I don't know that anybody's ever asked me to write them a ticket, and I know that I've never asked anybody to do that. But it's really his discretion. And even if I'd have said, "Hey, you got to give me a ticket," because I will tell you again, I am baffled that 15 over the posted speed limit uh, on a uh, with complete contrition, complete uh, you know everything that I could possibly do to make yeah. this be palatable, that it is still an incredible story that but that there, is this much. Recognition. Colonel Frank, you could understand. That there would be a, uh, uh, it, it, I don't think it would be a story, quite honestly. And, and I realize we're looking in hindsight. If you'd have said, a deputy, uh, uh, understand, even though I'm the head of DPS, uh, you write me the ticket that you think is, it, it, it would, it wouldn't be the story. It is, I think. And and it's a story because you you know. You're the head of the, the traffic enforcement for the state of Arizona. That's why it's a story. I understand. And, okay. and I do chuckle a little bit in the fact that I'm also the guy that brought body cameras to Arizona. Yes, yes. When I was the chief of police in Mesa, yes. I was the one who brought them for the accountability of people and the safety of the officers. I mean, we did the work with Axon to make these things who they are today. So, again, it, it's just the perfect storm. It's it's on me. I, I'm not going to do anything to change anybody's mind at this point. Uh, even if I had the guy come up today and go, hey, could you just write me a ticket uh, today? It's still people are going to be mad about Understood. it. And so uh, the, at the end of the day, it's on me. Uh, and, and we appreciate that. We want you to stick around because we want to give you an opportunity, though, to say something to the folks that are, are still questioning. They want to hear from you, like um, that, that feel that they wouldn't have gotten that same treatment. We're going to give you the opportunity for that coming up on the other side. Arizona DPS Director Colonel Frank Milstead is in studio with us. In the last segment, we talked about something uh, referred to as criminal speeding. And I, I know I think we misquoted something. I wanted to give you a chance to. to... No, it wasn't a misquote. I only had half the law, law, the law right. It. it was on me. Um, the what, what was asked was, was 85 criminal and yes it, it's so yeah yeah, yeah so 85. 80, 85 is criminal yes and also anywhere in the state of arizona anywhere in the state or 20 over the posted speed limit. so i miss fair enough okay just record one, is, record no i wanted clear. to clean it up so don't they but that doesn't mean that you still can't get a warning for it no absolutely not and, and we and again 43 percent of all the tickets dps issues are warnings okay. so we, again we, we have colonel frank milstead in here because of the body camera footage and the warning that was given back in october where you were caught going 90 and i think a 75 or at least 90 and a 75 which is considered criminal speeding and um, I also want to give you an opportunity to, to talk here as well. I know that there are other media outlets looking into some of your driving history. <laughs> um, when they go digging and they go looking, are they going to find anything? No, they, they already have. I mean, like I said, this thing has taken on a life of its own. In 2011, I got ran off uh, 87 going up to my cabin, uh, was in a rollover collision, basically walked away from a, what should have been a fatal accident. And the conspiracy theorists out there are now deciding that there was something weird about that. And, and I went through all this back in 2011 when I was the chief in Mesa. And uh, there was a, a person working for one of the news outlets, and uh, she had decided that, that there was something nefarious going on. And I went through all this so i i don't i and again i can't stop it uh it's just there's crackpots out there that that think that something i mean is nefarious and it's all been investigated it's all been gone through but i can't fix that okay fair I, and again there's no evidence of, i saw pictures of that rollover crash 2011 right and you're right i think it's amazing that you survived it only can i tell you why it's it was a it was a convertible was yes. it not that the headrest 
of the driver's seat had poked through the top of the convertible top. And I go, well, his head had to be somewhere around there. Actually, so, but for the grace of God, I did not hit a big tree. And all I was doing, I mean, it was it was started to rain. I'd stop, put the top up, and I was about a mile from my cabin. And, and was somebody was passing in a no-passing zone. Uh, and I went off the side, and I actually, as I was trying to not go head on, I hit a culvert, which started to spin the car and went off into the woods. But I did not hit any big trees. And if you see that, there's big trees everywhere. Yeah, everywhere along there. Uh, but that, that thing that popped up through the back of the car was actually a safety system within the car that was a rollover bar. I did not know that. that. once the car uh, exceeds five degrees uh, going over, that they automatically deploy. Oh, wow. So, okay, there you go. Colonel Frank Milstead, director of DPS, live and in studio with us right now. Colonel, I'm sure you have heard from some of the people of Arizona. We here at the radio station have heard from some of our listeners who feel as though uh, you got preferential treatment. What do you want to say to those folks right now? I would just say that that may well be. I have no reason to know one way or the other. I've never spoken to the deputy since. Uh, if he didn't write me because of who I was, uh, I would tell you, you'd have to ask him because I don't know. Um, and I I was elated that I got a warning because I thought I was going to get a ticket uh, and no one wants a ticket, not even me. Uh, so I, I don't I can't fix that. I can just tell you what the percentages are that most people in Yavapai County don't get a ticket. Would, would it be difficult? OK. And, and again, neither of us sworn law enforcement at any point. Neither of us have been in this situation. Would it be difficult? Career wise, I don't know if I'm using the right terminology for a sheriff's deputy or a, a DPS trooper who would have pulled you over to write the boss a ticket, to write a higher up a ticket. Would that not be difficult for them? You know, just put in that position, I would go, you know, could I write my boss a ticket? I don't know, maybe kind of difficult. Well, and I don't know. I mean, I'm not his boss. Fair, I know you're not. So, you I mean, I don't know if he, I, I would doubt that he would be comfortable writing Sheriff Master a ticket. I mean, he'd probably he go this Probably would like, not. Yeah. yeah. He's not going to so, write a sheriff. Yeah. A so ticket. I get that. Um, but as far as what, I, again, I, I don't. I'm not in his head. I'm not in his mind. I'm. I, we were. We just were passing some cars, yeah. and and the, and I think he saw that, and he followed us for I don't know two or three miles after we went through the traffic at at the you know a little. I said about probably about seventy eight, and he kept following us, and I, I told Angela, I said, look, I think he's going to stop us, <laughs> but I don't know when, and and he did. So I, I don't know if I have an answer for you. I know we talked in the last segment about you said that law enforcement are uh, told and trained to acknowledge your law enforcement if you're if you're pulled over. Um, You've told us, I want to say you've told us, and I, I want to make sure I got this right, but I'm under the impression that if I had a firearm in the car, I'm supposed to alert the uh, officer who might be pulling me over. Did, did, I didn't hear you do that, and I don't know if that means you had a firearm or not. So I, I don't try to do anything to draw attention to myself, and I assume if he knows who I am that he would know that I'm armed because I don't go very many places that I'm not armed. If you would acknowledge yourself as law enforcement, the, the other law enforcement officer would assume you're, you're, you're carrying a weapon. Okay. Yeah, and so, and, and again, it's... If you look at the traffic stops that we've made over our career, people have all kinds of ways of letting you know who they are and what they do. Sure. Whether they're doctors, nurses, firefighters, or police officers, people let you know, and they're hoping that through how they comport themselves and through what they do, that they would give it, uh, you know, a break. Uh, and some people, like I said, we get breaks too, are just down on their luck, and you, we're trying to try to change behavior. It, everyone doesn't need a ticket. Got it. Colonel Frank Milstead, director of DPS, appreciate you um, coming into studio and, and appreciate when we came back from from, from break two, <laughs> clarifying the yeah. the criminal speeding that uh, that we have here right now. No, and I appreciate the time to come on. I appreciate the relationship that uh, we have at DPS with you guys in the morning and we get to talk about issues. I'm sorry that today was taken up with this when we could have here, talked here. about some other things. But, hey, if this is important, we'll get through it and we'll, we'll press on. And those important things are always around, so we look forward to having you next month as well. Thank you.